Today we're going to look at how we can read frames from the camera and display them in a live preview in SwiftUI. The tutorials I've seen on this topic use UIKit, but SwiftUI is becoming more popular, so I thought it would be interesting to explore how to accomplish this without UIKit. First, we're going to develop the architecture from a higher level. Then, during the implementation, we dive deeper into each component to understand how they interact. In particular, we're going to implement the SwiftUI view first. Then we dive into the AV Capture session before we implement our class to handle frames. And finally, we connect everything together. I've linked the final code in the description so you can also explore it on your own. And with that, let's look at the building blocks we need. Here on the left, we have our phone's camera. And the first object we need is an AV Capture session from the AV Foundation framework. And this AV capture session is used to manage access of devices which capture media, such as the camera in our case. And it also allows us to manipulate the flow of data to an output that we have to specify. Now in the output of the AV capture session, we declare a buffer into which the capture session writes the frames which it grabs from the camera. And then later we can read these frames from the buffer with a class we call the frame handler. And in this class, we transform the image, which comes as raw pixels, basically, from the buffer into a format which we can use to show on the screen. And during this, this step, we use different frameworks to do so. And then finally, we pass the modified frame into a SwiftUI view, which presents the frame to the user. All right, now that we have an idea what we need, we can implement it. So first we create a new empty project, we select app, and we call it live camera Swift UI. And here we select Swift UI, click next, and we just store it here. And here we go. So the first thing we'll implement is the frame view. That's the Swift UI view that presents the image. And to do so, we create a new SwiftUI view, call it frame view. And this frame view takes in the image as a CG image. So we create a variable, CG image, it's an optional. And we also want a um, label to identify the image. Is the Swift UI string called frame. All right, and now we can just present this image if it is there. So with the orientation, we can rotate the image, um, but we don't do that here. We want the app to be in portrait mode. And um, so we just display it as it is, and then a label. And then else, if there is no image, we just present a black background. And that's the frame view. So first, we're going to create a new class called frame handler. So to pass data, so the frames later from this class to the view we just created, we make this an observable object. And then we uh, define this published variable frame, which is the CG image. Um, we just um, create it and we need AV Foundation here. And now let's focus on the AV Capture session. So before we can access the camera, we have to ask the user for permission. And we can see here in the documentation AV Foundation Capture Setup how to do that. And basically it's this block of code and um, we just add it here as a function that we can call. And we define a variable called permission granted to store if the permission was granted or not. As we can see here in the documentation, we also have to 
include an NS camera usage description into the app. So this is basically the text of this prompt. So let's do that. We go here to the project, go to info. And then here we need, I think this is privacy. Privacy camera usage description. There you go. And then we can enter a text camera required for review. And that's it. And with that, we can set the permission if we don't have it with the AV capture device request access. And here we're setting the permission granted variable. To invoke this, so to basically check if the user has granted us permission or not, we call this in the initializer of the class. And now let's define the AV capture session and also a session queue. And the session queue allows us to run the capture session on a background thread. We set up the capture session in a function we call setup capture session, which we'll implement next. And then when we have this function, we can use the session queue to run it. And what we can also see here is this unknown self that has to do with uh, avoidance of retain cycles. Let's finally implement the function setup capture session. So we do this here. And what we'll do is we'll connect an AV capture video data output to the capture session. And that lets us define a sample buffer that we'll need later to put the frames into. And as input, we choose an AV capture device input, which we'll use to read data from the camera. And we've done all the necessary preparation to do so. So let's add the video output as a variable so that we can use it. And now we check if the permission was granted. And if the permission was granted, we can access the camera using these two lines. And then we add the device to the capture session. So that's the connection between the uh, capture device input and the capture session. And then we set the output. So here we set a sample buffer delegate and this currently doesn't work because we don't conform to the AV capture video data output sample buffer delegate protocol yet, but we'll fix that in a minute. And then we connect the output to the capture session. And one final step, uh, we want to rotate the frame into portrait orientation. Now let's see how we can define the sample buffer and read frames from it. So what we do here is we set the sample buffer delegate and we set self as the delegate. So that means the frame handler class is our delegate. But what is a delegate and how does it work here? So a delegate object is an object that does work for the caller. So the caller um, delegates work to the delegate. Um, and what we have here is we have the AV capture video data output where we set the sample buffer delegate and in the sample buffer delegate, we declare a CM sample buffer. So CM stands for the core media, another framework that we need. And then whenever a new frame arrives at the output, the output sends this frame onto the sample buffer and it notifies the delegate that a new frame has arrived. And this notification works in the way that the function capture output in this delegate is called. And so to get images from the buffer, we can implement logic inside of the capture output function to do so. So to implement this, we'll implement an extension to the frame handler class. And we implement the sample buffer delegate protocol, as I mentioned before. And here's the capture output function. What's going on? Oh, okay, so we have to implement the NS object protocol here as well. 
And now this capture output function is invoked whenever there's a new frame. Here's our sample buffer. I call sample buffer. And uh, then we call this function we have yet to define. But basically this function is used to um, take the frame from the sample buffer and convert it into a CG image called CG image. And then we send this on the main queue to the frame variable so that it can be rendered in the view we defined earlier. Let's look at this in a bit more detail. So we have the sample buffer and we pass this into an image buffer, which is a CV pixel buffer, and that's a core video object. And from there, we pass into a core image image, a CI image. And from there, we can convert into the CG image, which is the core graphics image. And that's the framework that we use to render the image. While this looks like a lot of steps, the code is actually fairly short. Um, here it is. So we go from the sample buffer to the image buffer, then the CI image, and then the CG image. And we need two things. We need to import um, core image. And we need the context um, that is required to go to the uh, CG image from the CI image. And that's here. There is one small error here we can fix by calling super init. And that is the frame handler class. So now we're almost done. Um, the thing that's missing is that we have to call the frame view in the content view. And what we'll do first is we'll um, call the frame handler class, which is a state object. And now the variable um, that we defined here, frame, is available on this uh, model variable. And we don't need this, but what we need is we need a frame view and um, takes an image and we use model dot frame and then we can also do um, use this modifier to ignore safe areas so that we have a full screen view and that is all the code we need so we now coded up an app which can read frames from the camera and show them in the view using swift ui only to test the app you can connect your phone and then you can select it here make sure it's unlocked and then we can build it and it's working now you can't use the simulator for preview because the simulator doesn't have access to a camera so you always have to do the testing on the physical device and this is how you build a live camera view in swift ui from here, you can add features such as image filters or object detection models. And in fact, in a future video, that's exactly what we're going to do. But for now, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Thanks for watching and see you next time.